Michelle Sondland and Herbert Konings are founding partners of Security Token Group. All opinions expressed by them or guests on this podcast are solely their opinions and do not represent the views of Security Token Group or its subsidiaries. You should not take any opinion expressed on the show as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow any investment strategy. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of The Security Token Show. We're coming to you from our studio here in sunny Miami, Florida. I'm your host, Kyle Sondland, and I'm joined by my co-host and business partner, Herwig Konings. Pleasure to be here. And I cannot wait to jump into this week's episode as we roll right through into season four. But as a reminder to all of our podcast listeners, if you're audio only on Apple Music or Spotify, the show is actually now on video as well, posted to YouTube on Tuesdays alongside our audio version. But before we move into the show this week, Herwig, I do think it's time to share a word from our sponsor. Let's do it. This week of the Security Token Show is brought to you by Relio Technology Limited. They're a blockchain-enabled issuer, fund manager, and technology provider focused on eliminating the barriers to invest in, trade, and leverage exclusive real estate, private equity, and other real-world assets through decentralized finance, or DeFi. The platform is driving adoption of the security token industry, both as an issuer and as a platform to enable other institutions to do the same. Rulio has launched its own security token offering backed by equity in the business on top of a revenue share component to give investors exposure to the upside of the clients using the Rulio platform. To learn more about Rulio and the RST token, check out their white paper and pitch deck today at Rulio.fund. That's Rulio.fund to learn more. Thank you, as always, to our sponsor for making this show possible, in this case, Relio. Uh, it is what makes this happen to bring you all of this great content. In fact, what you can expect coming up on the show, we're going to start off with our Companies of the Week segment. That's actually where Kyle and I, we each choose a company that we felt made the biggest moves in the space last week. Then we're going to hit you with the top five biggest things you need to know that happened last week in the industry, followed up with some more news about what's happening and from all the companies in the space, followed by all the latest security token offering updates from Kyle over here as well as some secondary market trading activity. And then finally, we're going to end on our main topic, which this week is actually how to invest in security tokens. So a bit of an easy one, but believe it or not, might be a good, helpful breakdown for a lot of you out there. Pretty important one too, I'd say. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get right into it, Kyle. Yeah, so I can't wait to dig into Companies of the Week, and you've got us all waiting on the edge of our seats. So for episode 89, who is your company of the week? Well, I, if you are waiting, now you find out. It's officially, it's Uphold. It's a company out of San Francisco, actually, founded in 2013. They actually do wallet and uh, cryptocurrency trading as of right now to over 5 million customers to over 150 different countries. So not a small company, and they have chosen to also join the security security token for a so how did they do that Kyle it's step number one getting compliant so they bought a broker dealer by the name of JNK securities uh, actually a firm that has all the operational licenses that they're looking for it's a firm that was actually founded in 1993 so uh, they have what is hopefully gonna enable them to do to take cryptocurrency and allow you to take it and turn it into different stocks like Tesla in this case as the CEO gave in the example of their press release as well as a bunch of other things that are occurring uphold also services. So FX products, they say have carbon credits, they also have uh, a couple of other different types of commodities on their platform. So they are bringing together what I see as one of the big innovations of security tokens to enable you to seamlessly and instantly swap in between different assets and securities like Bitcoin to Tesla, to a REIT, to gold, to who knows what else. So for that vision and, and making the first step and making that possible, Uphold is my company of the week, Kyle. That's fascinating. I mean, really, when we're talking about a global financial system, we're not only just talking about anyone around the world being able to invest in a specific asset, but just like what Uphold is doing to allow anyone to invest in any type of asset through one specific platform. And, and that's really cool that they're bringing that all together. And we really are seeing this tokenized stock thing happening you know, in, in a lot of different ways. So many more people are looking to get access to that. It does seem to be a fantastic use for blockchain. And we will get into that a little bit later as well from someone else working on the same thing. But awesome work to Uphold building this stuff, going forward, staying compliant, which is key, and uh, you know, fantastic work from them. Well put, well put. Kyle, I'm sure everyone's waiting on the edge of the earth, their seats for yours as well, <laughs> so you know, go ahead, what do you got? Well, 
We have the, you know, in terms of private fundraising, when you're a private business looking to raise capital, Reg A plus is the holy grail of fundraising. And Reg A plus is the exemption that allows for any business, any company to raise money from the general public, from the crowd, up to 75 million, which is a ton of capital. Think Kickstarter or something like that, but on a much, much bigger scale. And so everybody wants access to a Reg A plus deal because obviously you get the largest investor base and you get a ton of money. However, you have to be approved by the SEC. And it's always been incredibly difficult to make that happen, especially when we're talking about a security token, leveraging blockchain technology. It's never happened before. But my company of the week has made history. We're talking about Exodus. And Exodus is a crypto trading platform. They allow you to buy and sell Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, as well as having a payment platform and exchange, as well as some other fun DeFi mechanisms and, and trading processes. And so what Exodus has actually done has been fully approved by the SEC to conduct a Reg A plus security token offering. It's the first of its kind that does it for equity in the business. And I just couldn't be more thrilled. There was an interesting quote from their documents where they said, quote, we recognize that the use of common stock tokens as a representation of class A shares purchased and held by a stockholder is novel. But it was approved by the SEC, first of its kind. This is fantastic. Congrats to everybody Huge. involved. Um, and so for that, Exodus wins my company of the week. Yeah, as they should. That's a natural pick, Kyle. As you said, in history, folks, history has been made. Don't get it confused. There were two ICOs that did compliant ICOs back in the day, approved by the SEC. But this is the first example of tokenized equity, tokenized securities. That's the name of the game. Love it. Great choice. Congratulations to Exodus for being the first to claim that title. And shout out to Securitai for helping make it happen from the back end. They're the transfer agent and the issuance platform and doing a lot of good stuff there. So I know that the team there have been working very hard on this as well. A lot well. of other great platforms. Some other partners great partners involved. I think as well. they're planning a list on T0 and Merge and they're, they're doing a whole kind of other thing. They're working with digital markets. So very exciting, great company uh, choice there, Kyle. Awesome work. And so from there, I think we can move into our top five. Let's do it. For the first article of the top five biggest things you need to know in security tokens from last week, we actually have an article coming out, an announcement from Credit Suisse. That's a $1.5 trillion asset under management company. That's a lot of numbers. And actually they have announced that they have been working with Paxos. They're a blockchain services company. They work with a lot of different financial institutions. And in this case, they can name Credit Suisse as one of their clients using their platform to perform what they have successfully done, which is a US equities trade in the same day. So Credit Suisse is real excited about this. As many in the Wall Street world know that you know, financial you know, exchanges and marketplaces like NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, they operate on a T plus two uh, settlement status, usually meaning that it takes at least two days after the trade to settle and clear it. In this case, it's happening instantly in the same day at any time uh, using the Paxos blockchain. So Credit Suisse is very excited about this. They made a huge announcement and they are saying that as the markets are getting digitized, Credit Suisse is going to go right there along with it as they are clearly leveraging the Paxos blockchain. So very exciting stuff. That is a huge announcement, I think. Yeah, Credit Suisse specifically referenced the difficulties in the T plus two settlement process where when they file for a trade or when they make, when they switch assets or move things from one place to another, it can take up to two or three business days in order for that to be recorded on the public ledger that's shown to everybody. They noted that that was not only impractical for, for today's society of trading so quickly and moving assets on a, on a fractionalized scale and from a you know, high frequency perspective, but also they noted that it's expensive. It's difficult to sell these things. You can't automate a lot of this process because it requires a lot of manual intervention. And so because of these things, they were really looking towards working on blockchain to improve a lot of these processes. And, and I just think that that's fantastic. A lot of these same things we've been preaching for a while, and it's great to see these banks are understanding the benefits of blockchain for, for improving their capital markets. This is a huge news, obviously a, a one and a half trillion dollar bank. These guys are definitely able to move markets and able to, to move the tide of public opinion and drive adoption. Very exciting stuff. This is a trend that can't be stopped. Credit Suisse is leading the way now along many other financial institutions. But as you said, they're going to take hold. They're going to take note. The digitization of markets is happening. And so for number two, I was really excited about 
Binance. There was some big news coming out from Binance, and you may recognize the name Binance. They were at one point the largest cryptocurrency exchange. I'm not exactly sure where all those, the top five really fall into place these days, but they are a huge name in cryptocurrency trading, and they've constantly innovated in providing a marketplace and infrastructure for the entire blockchain industry. And Binance announced this week that users on their platform will be able to purchase tokenized Tesla stock. And the way this is going to work is you can buy, there's a, a third party portfolio that owns X amount of shares of Tesla stock. So presumably a lot, we're not sure how much yet. But what they're doing is they're actually offering investors to be able to buy shares of that portfolio, essentially, to be able to trade that Tesla stock with a derivative that moves exactly how the, the shares should. And because of the fact that they can innovate on the traditional share model, they're actually allowing users to buy up to one one hundredth of a share of the Tesla stocks. So I guess a trading at $800 or something like that a share, up to eight bucks you could put in to buy one share, or one fractionalized portion of a Tesla share. This is the first public market security token that they are actually trading on their platform. And this is exciting news because it doesn't look like they're gonna stop at just Tesla. That, that, that's huge news. As you said, Binance is one of the biggest leaders in the space. There are a couple other major cryptocurrency exchanges that have also started to do similar things. As we just pointed out in my company of the week earlier with Uphold, they're looking to bring the same vision to the United States. Now we have this live happening today as we speak people able to take their Binance uh, holdings, whether it be Bitcoin and other uh, crypto assets and use their platform to get into Tesla. Uh, and so that's leading the way for security tokens. That's a huge deal. And it's it's almost certainly international only. I do have to Absolutely. say that. Um, Binance has had some, some you know, differences with regulators around the world. And so they, they certainly are very geo restricted in terms of who can actually trade there now. But this is a great first step. And it is interesting that all trades are going to be settled in Binance's stable coin for US dollars. So they are going to be settling these trades in US dollars and it trades on the public market hours as well. So it is the same public market hours. It's not 24 seven, despite the fact that theoretically it could be. So that's interesting to watch moving forward. Maybe some other exchange offers 24 seven trading for one of these derivative assets as opposed to, to just on the public so market. from Binance to USD to Tesla, it's happening. That's big. Big news, big news. Let's get into number three. So the Wall Street Journal, also pretty big, I would say. Millions of readers, huge reach, huge influence in Wall Street and financial uh, markets. And there has not been just one, actually, Kyle, but two different articles last week in the uh, Wall Street Journal uh, to actually talk about security tokens and mm -hmm. this mega trend that is happening. So if everything that we've talked about on the show so far hasn't gotten you excited, this really is mainstream validation in my eyes. So we've got two different articles here. The first one is called The Next Big Trade from Yes or No Bets to security tokens. So security tokens are actually in the name for the title, and that's actually by Sebastian Pellejero, uh, and actually talks about the NFT market, there's a great comprehensive overview of sort of the crypto markets in general, and of course, the inevitable future of tokenized finance and capital markets. So that's a great article, definitely highly recommend go, you go check that out. And there's also the second one here, uh, called GameStop and Bitcoin Renew to Push to digitize the stock market. And that's by Paul Vigna. And of course, that is the inevitable talk here about, as we saw with uh, our number one article from the top five this week, with Credit Suisse digitizing their markets in order to get T0 settlement times, uh, as well as many other efficiencies. This article goes into exactly that. And of course, it highlights the example of GameStop with the fact that it created a fiasco with the amount of in intensity and in trades that was happening around the stock all at one point, leading to all kinds of issues, including at one point it being you know, overshorted than the actual company size. And this is just a problem when you don't have everything on one blockchain knowing who owns what. And that is what this article is talking about. So the Wall Street Journal, Kyle, is saying 
security tokens are coming. They're coming through, they're driving great content. Definitely check those articles out if you are still looking to get a little bit of a better understanding or uh, of the industry and, and getting a, maybe a, a better uh, you know, idea from maybe a more financial perspective that's a little bit less technical as we tend to get on here on the show. But this is fantastic work. And yeah, as you mentioned, I mean, we, we've been saying it here that the, the GameStop crisis, a lot of those issues and, and being over leveraged and, and the accountability problems that happened between you know the brokers and the clearing firms and all these different pieces would be settled easily, no pun intended, if we had immediate settlement because of the fact that the accountability would be very clear, it's easy to see what happens, and you can automate this process much more effectively to prevent any of this over leveraging that sometimes happens. So kudos to Wall Street Journal for bringing more attention to the industry. That's awesome. And moving into number four, we've got Vesta Holdings. And Vesta Holdings is a $72 billion asset manager. They've got a real estate portfolio. And Vesta announced this week that they are going to be working with the Algorand blockchain to optimize all of their asset management and transfer for their portfolio. They're also actually developing a marketplace where they're going to allow homeowners to tokenize a fraction of their property to be able to sell to asset managers without actually needing to sell the entire home. Now that's cool. Fascinating stuff here, right? You could take essentially like a HELOC, but instead of taking a loan, you could actually sell a small portion of your property to somebody else in order to get some of that liquidity, have that thing trade, um, and be able to get to get those assets for yourself. And so this is fantastic. This is fascinating. Tokenizing a fraction of their home, Vesta seems like the proper place to do it. They've got the portfolio already. They've got the wherewithal to make it happen. That's huge. I mean, as I understand, as a whole, they have over seventy billion in asset center management now. They're testing this out clearly with their real estate portfolio, enabling huge innovation like that. That's never heard of uh, in traditional real estate uh, financial firms like that. So that's that. I think that's absolutely major news. Probably was was a contender for company of the week mm. there. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, they still need to make it happen. So we'll be watching this closely. We'll be looking out for announcements as they launch these services and their platform platform or their marketplace, I should say, because it seems like maybe they're going to enable outside access uh, to this as well. We'll so keep you updated cool. on that one, that's for sure. And the final one here, we have Crypto SX for number five. Uh, and actually, their big news is that the CISA, that's the Kagayan Economic Zone uh, Authority, gave them their approval to go ahead and launch their STO exchange. So I know they've been you know, in beta, as I understand it, sort of in a, a, a FinTech sandbox, as they call it, enabling the firm to go ahead and start uh, actually issuing and trading security tokens, which I understand there's a three to five uh, different uh, security tokens actually listed on the platform already, as well as the fact that they service a major cryptocurrency exchange as well. So now they're looking to launch and get super active in the security token space with full approval. And that's, by the way, uh, the, if you're not familiar with uh, CISA, that's actually one of the first economic provinces of the Philippines that has been focusing on fintech solutions and creating that sort of fintech sandbox. So it's clearly a regulatory environment that's friendly towards security tokens, in fact, supporting it. And now CryptoSX has been officially approved to go ahead and launch their exchange. And that's the beauty of security tokens, is that as long as we're following the same compliance standards around the world, it doesn't matter where these exchanges are coming out of and bringing liquidity for assets in different jurisdictions. These things can all play together. We can have interoperability around the world. Anyone could invest in these assets. They do have, I think, three tokens that are now trading on their platform, so we're gonna be doing our best to get those, that trading information, hopefully for next week's podcast episode in our market update. And uh, this is this is great news. Congratulations, another exchange looking to move into the security token space. Obviously, blockchain and crypto is cool, but this market of tokenized assets is just so much bigger than what we see in those traditional markets. And now it does seem like there's a lot of firms that are really starting to catch on. As you said, in a new global region that we may one day be able to access through security tokens through the crypto SX exchange, and that's big news. Very exciting, and that is the top five rundown for you folks. Let's get into some industry news. Take it away. We're turning into the middle of April and I've got a fresh news reel for you today, starting off with some regulatory updates. The first is a reminder from Dubai's Financial Services Authority. That's the government regulator equivalent of the SEC here in the United States. And they came out a few weeks ago with a proposal for a security token framework. And they're actually seeking public feedback to help with this development. So Dubai has been known as a leading region for blockchain adoption across 
all aspects of industry. And now, finally, it's turning its attention towards the capital markets. And of course, they recognize security tokens as their future. And they also aim to target utility and exchange tokens with their own framework after they complete this one for security tokens. And we've also got an update from Canada issuing a clarification and a resource really for marketplaces to distinguish between the different types of platforms for security tokens and crypto assets and the different broker dealers in between and how they must adhere to specific rules. The regulators specifically are emphasizing that the marketplaces need to follow the current frameworks, but the announcement also marks that they recognize this new category of technology. And Ripple's court case with the SEC has gained yet another victory in what seems to be an ever-swinging tide in the favor of the private firm. And their battle over the status of the XRP tokens being classified as securities with the SEC, you know, in the event that actually the SEC successfully makes this case, the firm will have violated numerous securities laws. And so one of the big arguments the SEC had was that the founders of Ripple said that they wouldn't sell XRP, despite claiming that the financial records show that they did. And it turns out the court didn't agree because they actually dismissed the requirement for the company's key executives to share financial information in this case, which also sent the token flying upwards in price as the markets deem this a you know big boon for the, the company in Ripple's favor and likely that the case will go their way. And really, at the end of the day, this doesn't matter. Uh, the information is sort of irrelevant to this court case, which again, it's about whether or not XRP is a security. If it were indeed the case that it was a security, a new court battle would surely follow requiring that these financial documents eventually be disclosed. Uh, but of course, in this case, it doesn't matter. And next up, we have another segment from Peter Gaffney's Tokenized This Series on Medium. Moving into his 13th week, Peter talks about tokenized intellectual property rights. So monetizing IP rights via blockchain technology is a great use case. If you need a product or service covered by intellectual property and don't want to wait for you know, 10 or 20 years for the license to expire, just go purchase the token rights on the secondary market. And that way, it's very cool niche model that could unlock a lot of value for both creators and businesses everywhere. And next up, we have an article by Mohammed El Mazri. He's the founder and CEO of Permian Chain. And in Oil and Gas Middle East.com, Mohammed talks about the energy sector and why it should embrace tokenization because of the complexity that comes with the supply chain. He says that tokenization creates the possibility of having a universal paperwork structure that is associated with the oil and gas contract. And of course, eventually, you could even use security tokens to turn them into trade finance investments. So if you have an you know, interest in the energy sector, definitely check this article out. And the French state-run investment firm called Cassès des Depois de Consignation is giving us their take on the tokenization finance on Ledger Insights. So Nadia Falal, who has led their blockchain crypto division, says that they have been very focused on blockchain for some time now, including through four different initiatives, one with BNB Paribas Bank and other blockchain veteran firms to work on security token settlement. And they're also studying stable coins very closely and are actively working with industry groups and regulators, telling us that France is going to be way, way deep in security tokens and digital finance in general. All I can say is, Keep it up. And the final opinion article I have for you from last week is on watertechnology.com from Matthew Bastian, who is a senior director of market development at QSIP Global Services. So he makes the argument that the need for clarity from regulators between ICOs and STOs and other digital assets is critical in order for financial markets to thrive. And we, of course, wholeheartedly agree with Matthew. We've got a list tracking all the countries who have defined security tokens already and those who are on their way to do so. Check that article out on our Medium blog. And to end the segment, I've got a big event for you to put on your radar. I'm, of course, talking about the Virtual Digital Securities and Tokenization Summit on May 19th, which is hosted by DigiShares. You'll hear from leading you know, figures in the space uh, for blockchain and real estate and security tokens, and you'll gain new perspectives on how established companies are renewing their business by introducing blockchain for tokenization. 
And both Kyle and myself, we will be speaking at this event, and we'll be joined by T0 CEO Sam Arsalehi, Archax CEO Graham Rodford, Ford, DigiShare CEO Klaus Scanning, among many others. So this event is two days long, and I'm looking forward to yet another awesome security token conference. Check out more information on this one at fintechdisrupt.io. And of course, I want to remind you all that the Security Token Show is a weekly clubhouse on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern. Reach out to us if you need an invite to the app. And otherwise, be sure to book your calendar with this one. We're bringing in tons of different speakers from CEOs of issuance companies and exchanges to lawyers to issuers leveraging security tokens. So it's kind of like a mini security token conference every single week. Come join us this week and ask questions on our main topic about how to invest in security tokens. And that's all I've got for you from last week. Now let's go over to Kyle and get the latest STO and market updates. And now it's time for the new security token segment, where we cover some of the hottest security token offerings and the deals that come across my desk. And so kicking it off first is Exodus, who won my company of the week for the approval of their Reg A Plus security token offering. And we covered that in extensive detail earlier in the show, but now I'm gonna break down the terms. The common stock is selling for about $27 a share and they're raising up to $75 million from the public. And yes, that means anyone in the US, no matter their income level or experience investing. It's the first of its kind to be approved for this fundraise as most security token offerings are limited to accredited US investors only, which represents less than 10% of the population here. The minimum investment is actually only just one share. So you can go on their app through Apple or Android and make that purchase as well as just going online and doing it there. Not only is it live today, but from what I was able to research today, it's actually already over 80% subscribed, which is absolutely incredible stuff. This deal is going to get done and fast. And moving into Singapore, iStocks has listed a fixed income security token backed by investment fund Maple Tree's newest real estate fund. This is going to be Maple Tree's 11th private equity fund and consists of real estate sectors across the world, including Australia, Europe, and the US, as well as some student housing and other things in the US and the UK on top of the commercial. The fund raised a whopping 507 million euros at closing and consists of seven grade A office properties, totaling approximately 270,000 square meters at a total asset value of 1.2 billion euros. The trust has a term of five years with a target of 12% internal rate of return that will make distributions on a semi-annual basis. It does include a provision to allow for two additional one-year extensions to that to allow for additional flexibility. It is open to accredited investors and excludes those in the US from participating, unfortunately, but it is an interesting deal. It is now live trading on the iStocks exchange, so you gotta go check that one out. Moving on to Medignation, which is a telemedicine and mobile health company that builds mobile apps and helps monitor and take action for digital healthcare. The firm has just announced that they will be working with Mount Pellerin to tokenize their equity. Medignation shares have been incorporated into a token on the Ethereum blockchain, and one token provides one ownership share of the company, but it also does include voting and dividend rights. This is the third issuance through the Mount Pellerin platform as we had Mount Pellerin's equity itself as well as IM Innovation Lab and they're quickly becoming a leader in the space through their work tokenizing businesses around the world. And moving on to Texture Capital, they've announced their newest client, Cosmo X, which will be fundraising for its newest venture fund via Texture Capital's ATS. Cosmo X is a venture fund that represents an indirect economic interest in the fund portfolio. Now, this means that upon liquidity from any of their investments in the portfolio, up to 50% of the deal value will be used to repurchase Cosmo tokens on the secondary market and then burn. So in that way, the same portfolio will be distributed over a smaller subset of outstanding shares, increasing the token NAV, and in theory, the price of the underlying asset. This will include secondary market trading on Texture Capital's ATS once the lockup period for the investment expires, but the fund is an evergreen fund, so it will technically never close as they will just continue to raise money over time, building a larger and larger portfolio with each additional investment. And with that, it's time to move into the market segment. And moving into our market update for the week, we start with some resources to dig into. 
First on the list is from Josh Horowitz, who discusses the INX security token offering and his thoughts on the deal. He identifies the underlying value of the security token and breaks down the potential of the company for the future of the security token industry. Check this one out to get a better idea of what the company is looking to build. And if you're looking to invest, don't wait too long as the deal closes on April 22nd. Our second and final article of this week's episode comes from crowdfund insiders Omar Faridi, who covers the security token market report from March and breaks down the important highlights. He gives great coverage and is a go-to resource for security token trading information, so you definitely want to check this one out. Great work, as always, to Omar. And now, let's move into the secondary market trading segment. As always, all news and pricing data is sourced from stlmarket.com. And when we dive into it, the STL market cap this week was up 3% to 631 million, thanks to a strong rebound from the St. Regis Aspen Hotel and a few percent gain from the largest security token, Overstock. A strong rise in blockchain capitals token combined with the stagnating price of T0 moved Bcap to second place by market cap, which is actually the first time this has ever happened, likely due to Bcap's large position in Coinbase, which we've covered in the past and is set to go public this Wednesday. T0 is still struggling to build a lead on the industry and it still has not lived up to the high expectations many had for the marketplace, but at least Aspen did bounce back from its strong dip last week, falling back into that $1.20, $1.30 range it's held since listing. There also have been hardly any trading activity from the realty tokens as they have migrated from Uniswap. Ethereum gas fees have become too expensive to justify paying dividends on chain and has resulted in a pretty horrible user experience. Realty is experimenting with other trading options, including a layer two solution, as well as potentially other blockchain issuances to remedy the situation, but there's no update there yet. It's another exciting week in the markets. You definitely need to do your own research, hit me up on Twitter, and send me all your hot takes. And I think it's time to move on to the main topic. Getting into our main topic for this week, we're going to be talking about how you can invest in security tokens. So a bit of a basic topic, but actually we've been getting a lot of requests and we think it makes a lot of sense, especially since a lot of you are watching for the first time. How the heck do you actually invest in one of these things? So Kyle, let's get started. Yeah, this is an exciting topic and I think one that, that's definitely super important if you're going to be putting your money anywhere. So before we dig into anything, certainly we want to say you need to do your own research before you invest in anything. Absolutely. But Digging into investing in security tokens, you have two different types of, of tokens that you could buy. You could buy a security token offering or the primary offering of the deal, which is where you're going to be investing in a company before it's trading on a market. This is when you're just buying into a company's vision, you're holding it for the long term, you're investing in the idea of either the company's equity or you're buying real estate or something that you want to hold long term. The other way you could invest is through an exchange or through a marketplace where you're just going to be trading this thing. This is something that's much more liquid, which allows you to buy and sell just like you would on Robinhood or something like that. And so these are two very different types of, of vehicles and, and you're going to be thinking about your investment much differently, I think, in both cases. Yeah, I think that's a great place to start. Most STOs are kind of like pre-IPOs or those coming from the crypto space, the pre-ICOs, right? They're, the tokens might not even have been minted or issued yet during the primary offering phase, whereas as you said on the secondary market, they're already trading. A lot of that risk has been taken out because investors before you have already put the money up for the company or the fund or whatever to go ahead and use that money. Now you have a track record and you can see how successful they've been and make your own valuation on the secondary market. Uh, and so I think we can kind of dive in first by focusing on that primary side, I think, uh, and talk about the different ways you might be able to actually find a security token offer in the first yes. place because uh, most of the time it's very difficult uh, you may find most likely I think a majority of people would use a funding portal or a middleman mm -hmm. that's gone ahead and you know they're like a list of different security token offerings that they're hosting and help facilitate some of the benefits being that they've gone ahead and done due diligence on the company you're offering to make sure that it's legitimate and of course that they've got the infrastructure and the user experience that you're comfortable with uh, to you know participate in and actually make your 
investment through that platform. In another case, you might actually have an RIA, you know, a registered investment advisor, or you might have a broker dealer that you're a part of that you may request and ask or may actually be hosting security token offerings of their own. And many of them are developing their own digital dashboards to make it easier for their clients to go ahead and participate in right. these now digital offerings, right. right? And then finally, a lot of the technology providers out there have made it possible for companies to cut out the middleman altogether. That's what everybody loves to do in blockchain. So no need, no need right, for a funding portal or for a broker dealer. A lot of the times they'll do their own marketing and they have their own reach for customers or investors to go ahead and want to invest in their company. And they'll just go ahead and host their own security token offering right Right there on their own website uh, and let you participate and get their you know, security tokens. Yeah, you might hear of a deal from the podcast, like some of the ones that I mentioned earlier. You may see a deal on Twitter or one of these, you know, LinkedIn or something like that from a company that's promoting their offering. And that would be direct. That would be straight from the company themselves that you're investing in. Or most likely, you know, you might be able to go through a, a portal themselves that collects all those deals together where you can browse and sort by the types of things that you would want to invest in. So those are kind of the three types of, of examples. But do we have some specific examples? Yeah, no, you may want to do your, your own research to figure out what kind of portal am I looking for to help me find deals, right? If you're looking for one of those, a lot of the times they categorize by asset class, like real estate or startups, or even a specific category of startups like health sciences or FinTech or blockchain. Uh, and in this case, uh, you've got in the United States, you may also have you know differentiation by geography, like in the United States, mm -hmm. you've got portals like uh, Republic, Realty, uh, you've got uh, you know uh, Blockhouse, Reno, and Toro. Uh, Akimona, uh, these all have sort of their different features or different networks of, of subsets that they're looking right. for, you know? And then on broker dealer side, there's a lot of different platforms that may not necessarily be openly having their own marketplace for you to participate in, but you may qualify as an investor and you may reach out to them and say, do you have security token offerings for me to participate in? And then finally, we've got examples like INX, a very public offering that has gone out as one of the first foreign approved offerings by the SEC to do a registered public security token offering in the United States. Exodus so a, a as well, deal. another now example. We've got Exodus, right, as we mentioned earlier with the Reggae offering. These are all STOs or really that are directly hosting. Right, and really owes our sponsor, so it's another perfect example, Kyle. Um, so there's a lot of different ways in Europe, across Asia, there's a lot of host of different other platforms uh, that you can go check out and, and find some security token offerings to invest in. Yeah, you're totally right. Even we've, we've seen this happen very successfully, even from a direct perspective with Curzio Equity Owners, the, the token launched by Curzio Research was able to successfully fundraise. They did that all by themselves, were able to raise from, from the crowd, and then were able to take that that to the secondary market, which is maybe a, a good transition yeah. into how that trading works. Right. When you miss the boat, like many of us did with the CEO token, you then have to go get it and you have to buy it on the secondary market. So how does that sort of look like? Yeah, the secondary market is interesting because sometimes that's managed directly by that issuer themselves, right? If the issuer fundraised by themselves and did this manual process um, alongside technical providers and a lot of other services and, and people involved, but when the issuer handles it themselves, they also kind of need to figure out that listing side on their own. So this is part of one of those risks that we, we mentioned in the primary offering is, is taking it from that primary offering to the secondary market. Whereas once it's already listed on a market, then you know that you can buy and sell immediately. And so when you're when you're investing in a security token offering, um, you can buy from an exchange like or marketplace like T0 or Open Finance. These are very similar to your experience where you might have on the stock market where you're just buying and selling assets here in the US. But then there's also international markets like Merge or iStocks and Exchange that, that provide in European um, investors with, with this opportunity as well. So there's a lot of, of secondary markets that also provide trading services. Yeah, and I know there's like a list of 80 or 90 more that are coming out, again, all in different uh, features and facets. You may be used to a certain experience where they take out the wallet technology and security tokens altogether. We've seen 
big banks like HSBC and, uh, and many others uh, actually say that's, that's their approach versus we're seeing a lot of different marketplaces that are also looking to launch and support security token offerings. We know NASDAQ has a whole suite uh, of tokenization services now, and we've got a list of over 90 uh, yeah. I think that you guys have been managing. It's coming. It, it just takes a while because with, with the securities exchanges, you have to follow really strict regulation in order to make that happen, in order to, to provide that as a business service. So, you know, of those 80 or 90, a significant majority of those are still in the process of getting their licenses approved from whichever country they're looking to launch in. There's many here in the U.S. that have been approved that are kind of in that middle phase of taking it from, okay, you have your license, but how do you create this actual marketplace or exchange around it? And so we've got examples like Texture Capital, Rialto Markets, North Capital, Securitize Markets, Oasis Pro Markets, and many others that are looking to launch or looking to come live sometime soon. So we're, we're really excited about that. And then internationally, as there's definitely a significant larger majority of these exchanges around the world that are looking to launch, including Crypto SX and Dusk Network and many others, and Archax and, and many more around the world. So there's some, some great examples there. And then if you're you know more of a crypto native person, if you're coming from that world, you're familiar with Bitcoin, you're familiar with Ethereum, some of these other investable assets, there are decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, which you may be familiar with if you're into that space, that do provide some security token liquidity. And there's some other decentralized exchanges like Curio, um, as well as some others that are looking to come out soon that are going to be able to provide this liquidity as well. And, and just like with crowdfunding portals, a lot of these marketplaces, they're also starting to focus again on specific geographies, on specific asset classes. So do your own research to see which ones you might qualify for and which ones have the type of offerings that you're looking for to invest in. Yeah, yeah. On the secondary market, it's really just going to be about buying and selling the things that you think. You definitely need to do your research. You got to be careful. But um, very exciting stuff, and that's security tokens for you. It's, yeah. uh, it's how you invest. It's how you invest. Thanks With that, a lot. Yeah, I think we can get uh, wrap up the show here. A uh, reminder that definitely here is, we think, the best place that you'll be able to find all the latest security token offerings and news and information. So keep watching the show and keep going to stomarket.com for all the latest trading data as well as new offering news and as well as actually our newsletter that we just launched, What's Drippin', managed by the head of communications at Security Token Market, Jonah Schulman. Uh, and of course, be sure to submit any news, any events, anything that you'd like us to cover on the show, or if you'd like to reach out to Kyle or myself on Twitter or LinkedIn, you know, definitely give us a shout. Thanks so much for listening. Talk to you next week.